welcome to the channel where your bits likes to match the background to the shirt that she's wearing. <laughs> I mean, okay. it's the background that's matching your outfit. Thank you so much. The world revolves around me. Is that what you just said? Please confirm. <laughs> hi, hi. I'm a little angry today. I'm a little upset because some shit's going on. Some shit's going down. Don't, Don't you dare, dare change, change the, the color, color on me. <laughs> Get off your phone right now. I'm going to start swinging. I swear I'm going to start blindly swinging. I don't care if I break the microphone. <laughs> Wow. Honey! Match the background to my outfit. <laughs> Today I'm a little bit upset. I'm a little bit annoyed because I got tricked on TikTok again. You guys know this channel is infamous for getting tricked on TikTok. Okay, we had the feta cheese, which, by the way, I saw a lot of comments that I did it wrong, so... Maybe the trickery is me. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's my fault. But I saw this TikTok that had 20 million views and they were like, you need to watch this movie. If you love a good psychological thriller, oof. If you love a good horror, oof. If you love a good suspense, oof. This is the movie for you. It had 20 million views. And so I was like, obviously, I'm that person. I love psychological thrillers. I'm gonna watch this movie. I paid like $2 to rent it on YouTube and let me explain. I've got thoughts and I've got feelings. I understand that this is a low budget film. It's the movie called Frozen. No, not the Disney movie, a different movie. It came out in 2010 called Frozen. And it's about a pair of friends, well, three friends who get stuck on, you know, those ski lifts, those ski lifts that I absolutely yes, yes. hate. The fact that it's just a swinging metal chair with a safety bar, with a safety bar and you're just hundreds of feet up in the air and then like the wind comes and you're just swinging around like it's a swing set at a local playground. I hate those. I hate those so much. I don't know how there's not more deaths on ski lifts. Not saying that I wish there was, but I just think that the manufacturing of it overall is just kind of faulty. Like it's just one of those things where, you know, a hundred years from now, people are going to look back and be like, they used what to go up a mountain? Oh my god, barbaric. We use drums now. Yeah, are they cavemen? <laughs> we just put on our reality VR headsets and we go skiing. Wow. So um, they get stuck on a ski lift for like a week. That's the premise. And I was like, I like it. I watched it. And then I was like, ooh, I don't like it. <laughs> Why? I think maybe it has to do with the timing. I know the reason that I don't like it is probably because it's a decade old and the timing of it. They have very um, stereotypical plot tropes that are in this movie. So I'm just going to jump right into it. I'm going to tell you the story and then I'm going to try to make it the best that I can. If you've seen this movie, if you love it, I'm sorry. I know that this producer and this director, they have amazing movies after this, but this one was just not a hard hit. So let's get started. There's three friends and they're just on this little ski trip together We've got Parker. We've got Lynch and we've got Dan now Dan and Parker. They're dating I think Parker and Lynch are their last names I think it's Joe Lynch and something Parker, but she's dating Dan right and Lynch happens to be Dan's best friend Wow, I made that way more confusing than it needed to be. <laughs> we've got three friends at the ski slopes hitting the slopes. So they're all there and they're looking at the ski lift and they're talking to each other and they're like, hey, just wait a wait, minute. Sorry, ski lift is going up or going down? Going up. So they're like looking at the person operating. They're like at the bunny slopes. So the way that a ski slope is set up, because I've been once in my life, so now I feel credible enough to tell you how it goes. So it's like the bunny slopes and then the ski lifts are over here. The bunny slopes go straight down. It's like straight up like a hill. Not even. You could go sledding. And then you get on the ski lift and it sledding. takes you up. Sledding, not slutting. <laughs> <laughs> So then you get onto the ski lift. So there are the bunny slopes. You know, you see all these families hanging out and they're looking at the ski lift operator. So someone is at the bottom making sure that you get on safely and they just make sure that none of them get jammed. And they're like, okay, just wait. We just have to wait until they change shifts and this woman's gonna come on and she's obsessed with Lynch. So she's gonna let give us ski passes for free. Like we're just gonna have to pay her like, let's say $20. So if you were to buy it from the actual ski resort, it would cost hundreds of dollars a person per day or something like that but they were going to give the ski operator cash and bribe them to give them ski lifts for free, like the pass for free. Mm -hmm. So they're like, that's all we have to do. We have to wait till this woman comes on and she's the ski lift operator. We're going to slip her a 50, a $50 bill. And she's going to be like, okay, you guys get free passes because she likes flirting with one of the dudes. Mm -hmm. And so they're waiting and they're waiting and they see the shift change happen. They see another operator take the place of the operator. 
but it's not the girl that they were hoping for. It's a full blown man. So how are they gonna flirt with this man? I mean, they're assuming he's straight. They're like, he's not gonna be attracted to Lynch. Like, what's he gonna do? So they're like, man, what do we do? What do we do? Should we just go buy ski lifts? We don't have enough money. What are we gonna do? Like, we're just gonna hit the bunny slopes all day? And they're getting increasingly frustrated. And both of the dudes, they look at Parker and they're like, you gotta do it, Parker. You gotta take one for the team. You gotta go, you gotta flirt with this. His name is Jason. You gotta go flirt with the ski lift operator and say, listen, me and my friends like wanna get on the ski lift. We forgot our money. We forgot our wallets. All we have is cash. An avalanche. Also, I thought it, I kept calling it avalanche in the Diet Love Pass video and everyone was like, it's an avalanche. <laughs> But does it, does an avalanche sound so much better? It sounds like it's from Switzerland. Like a Switzerland avalanche versus an American avalanche bits. <laughs> I'm an American citizen. I can make fun of us, okay? Bye. So she gets encouraged to go flirt with the ski lift operator. She makes her way over there. She has a $100 bill and she goes up to the guy and she's like, hey, what's your name? And he's like, my name's Jason. And she's like, Oh, cool, Jason. So, like, me and my friends, we forgot our wallets, and we just have $50. Do so you think you can get us ski passes? And he straight up looks at her, and he's, like, chewing his gum, and he's like, I could lose my job. And she's like, I know, but, like, please. And she's, like, unzipping her shirt a little, you know what I mean? And then he's like, okay, all right. I don't right. get that. Like, what? Like, when girls just kind of push their boobs a little, it's like, <laughs> I mean, I see this, but it doesn't change anything. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing ever happened. Yeah. Know? So Yeah. Trust me, I tried. Anytime we go into Sephora, I'm like, honey, don't you think my face would look great with this moisturizer? It never works. It never works. Yeah. So she's like pushing her boobies together and she's like, please, like my friends and I, we forgot our ski passes. And she's kind of insinuating that there's two other girls that will be indebted to Jason. Now meanwhile, you've got Dan and Lynch, they're just watching her flirt. And it seems like Lynch is really upset. Lynch is like, really, Dan? Like, you had to bring her? She doesn't even know how to ski. Like, why did you bring her? We should, now that you guys are dating, you just have to go everywhere together. So at this point, you can kind of already tell that there's going to be a ton of tension between the three. Like, this is not going to be an enjoyable ski trip for all three of them. It seems like it was supposed to be just the bros, and then, you know, Parker inserted herself. She doesn't even know how to ski, so it's like this whole ordeal. And finally, she weighs at them, and she's like, come on, come on, come on. And she had actually gotten three ski passes for $100. Oh yeah, she actually asked Jason for change, but he didn't have any because he's a ski lift operator and not a fucking cashier. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, take it or leave it. So she took it. They get onto the ski lift. You can tell that the ski lift operator is a little disappointed that it's two dudes and not two girls, like she insinuated. But whatever. They get on and the lift starts going. They're like on this swinging metal chair. They're going up the lift, and it's insane. Like Wait, even so, just, what does it look like? It's just like a bench. It's a bench with one little safety bar. So I'm three people are sitting on yeah. one hanging ba bench. Yeah, and it just goes like this, and then you gotta lift the bar when you get close to the top, and then you gotta jump off. Otherwise, you get hit by the bench. I'm telling you, a Disney kitty ride, the teacup ride at Disney World, is safer than a ski lift. I don't know okay. if you can quote me on that. So they get onto this lift and it's really annoying because the whole time you can see that Lynch is getting increasingly upset because he just feels like an absolute third wheel. Like this was supposed to be him and his best friend's ski day. And the whole time Parker is like, why don't you call me any pet names? So I think this is one of the reasons that I don't really like this movie is because there is that trope of like this third wheel girlfriend inserts herself into everything. She's all like, why don't you call me any pet names? Like, why don't you call me honey? Why don't you call me babe? And he's just like, I don't know what you're talking Talking about and so the Lynch is sitting there and he's like oh, this is really annoying and even at that point Parker starts smoking a cigarette on the ski lift and Lynch is like what's that smell she's like what you smoke weed I smoke cigarettes what's the big deal and he's just like rolling his eyes it just seems like they have big differences okay so they're arguing on the ski lift and then the ski lift stops just abruptly stops and everyone looks around and everyone starts booing. They're like, boo, like what's going on? As if that's going to fix the ski lift. And everyone's Wait, like, so what sorry. the hell? Who's everyone? Literally all of the people on the ski lift. So every, like all the chairs are filled. I mean, it's a massive resort. It's a Sunday, you know, there's Wait, tons so, of people skiing. I'm so confused. They are on a bench? They're on a bench, three people a bench. And then there's another bench here. Oh, how and it far goes, apart are they? Not that far. Oh, so it's a bench that's into a circle shape? No, so the bench is like one bench like this, yes. and then another bench like this, uh -huh. and then another bench like this, yeah. and it runs in a circle. So they move in a circle, like a Ferris wheel, but think this way. 
Oh, so one side is going up, one side is coming yeah, down. Yeah, but it just Got revolves it. and it never stops. I so that's see. why you have to jump off so that it can come back down and then pick people oh. up and then, you know. But they can reach the other people or not really? No. Oh. You'd have to. But they can like, kind of hear each other. You can see them and hear them, but oh. there's no way to reach them because there's no connection other than the wire on top and you're like hundreds of feet in the air, right? And so everyone starts booing. It's broad daylight. They're like, boo! What do you mean? We paid for these ski passes. And, you know, Parker starts freaking out because she's terrified of heights so she's like what's what's happening why why did it stop and dan's like listen you need to calm down babe because it's not that big of a deal did you know only one of these ski like lift benches has ever fallen off the ski lift like that's it only one and she's like that doesn't make me feel better and lynch being kind of upset that she is you know inserting herself into this bro moment he starts hopping on the bench he starts shaking the bench (laughs) he starts hopping on it and she's getting really stressed out and she's like stop and then finally the ski lift starts moving again so they start moving they get to the top they jump off i don't think they made it all the way to the top but it was like one of those non-bunny slopes so then they ski their way down and you just have all these montage clips of them having a fun time you know lynch is talking to other girls that are skiing because he's single ready to mingle you know they're snowboarding they're skiing it's just a good time and then they go inside to eat lunch so all of them are sitting down now lynch and dan sit down with their food first and i think parker had to make a call so when you go to this ski resort they have these lockers and you have the key to it and you keep all of your belongings there you keep your phone in there you keep you know your cards in there everything in there because you don't want to lose it on the mountain Mm -hmm. so she had to get her phone from her locker made a call put it back in her locker and came to sit with the guys and as she's walking towards the guys with her lunch she hears lynch actively complaining that she's there he's just like listen why why does she have to be everywhere that you go now like can we at least hit the big slope like one time dude like really we're just gonna do fucking bunny slopes why is she even here if she can't ski like just the same old spiel right and she overhears it she sits down she seems uncomfortable and that's when lynch is like all right listen parker that's not what i meant i just she's like it's fine you guys can go without me like i can just stay here and like i don't know be on my phone you guys can hit the slopes one more time without me and he's like no no no. like that's not what i meant i mean of course i want to get to know you it's just i was a little frustrated because we have rules that we don't talk about real life shit here but you know you keep kind of bringing up real life stuff like this is supposed to be our escape and you know i just really like you i just sorry that came out the wrong way so he's trying to make up for it he feels bad he feels shitty like he's probably a nice guy and so he's like no please like come on let's just hit the slopes once and she's like okay i mean i think i can do it Mm -hmm. so they're like okay let's go let's go so they finish up their lunch they put their phones back in their lockers and they head to the ski lift now jason's there and he's telling everyone like you can't come on the ski lift and they're like wait what do you mean why and he's like we're closing early there's like a winter storm headed this way and they're like are you serious right now are you serious you guys are closing early well when do you guys open again like can we use our ski passes for like the next day or something Mm -hmm. and he's like well it's sunday we don't open until next week weekend on friday and they're like man can you just let us on once just once like we won't tell anyone just get get us to the top we'll ski down no one has to know and he's like no i can't do that no please please we've been hitting the bunny slopes all day please just just one time i will owe you the world next time we come we'll bring you cookies you know please cookies not the world (laughs) and he's just like all right get on so they get heading up the ski lift now as we can see they're the only ones on the ski lift Mm. so they're on the ski lift and they're like okay at least we got one good one in like it's gonna be the best one we're gonna ski all the way down then we're gonna go home what should we eat on our way back home right they're talking about all of this now meanwhile at the bottom jason is operating the ski lift and um that's when one of his coworkers comes up to him and is like hey boss wants to talk to you in the office and he's like what do you mean am i getting fired or something no you know how you requested like two days off next month well he doesn't want to give it to you, so you got to go talk to him. And he's like, I can take over this. Um, and Jason's like, what? What do you mean? I I told him that I need two days off. I told him it's I planned this in advance. It's a birthday party. All right, there's three more people. You just need to wait for them to come down. But okay, I'm going to go talk to him. So Jason runs off, and this guy is standing there, and he's waiting for these people to come down. And he's getting a little bit antsy. Like, he needs to pee. He keeps saying, shit, I need to wait, piss. Wait, so Jason did tell this yeah. person that there's three more people. Yes. Which is... Parker and them? Yes, but he had actually let three more people before that. Oh, so there's actually six people on there. Yes. So what happened was they don't come down the ski lift. They come down the slopes. This entire movie is just 
not me being a Karen, but everyone at this ski resort needs to get fired, honestly. <laughs> this yeah. movie would never happen in real life. I'm hoping from a major ski resort because I can't imagine them just doing this. So he's waiting for these people to come down. Now they don't come down on the ski lift because you go up it, you ski down. And so he sees a group of three coming down, like skiing down. And he's like, a group of three. They were the last ones. Nobody else is there. And he's got to pee. So he's like, all right, ready. And he shuts off the ski lift and he runs away. Like he's got to go pee. Now, meanwhile... Oh my god, this is like... No, what it are gets, you saying? It gets stupider, okay? Now, meanwhile, Parker, Lynch, and Dan are on the middle of this ski lift, hundreds of feet in the air probably, and it just abruptly stops. And they're like, oh, again, so annoying, right? Mm -hmm. And this time, obviously, Parker's a little bit more angsty because it's not the middle of the day. There aren't people all over the place. There are not people on the mountain. There's no people in front of her, behind her. Like, they had actually hustled their way into the last ski you know lift thing and mm -hmm. so she starts freaking out and dan's like hey you know let's kill time max 10 15 minutes and then the ski lift will be back on sometimes they have these things where they shut off for like 30 minutes it's like a power situation but um let's just talk let's just bond you know i want my best friend and my girlfriend to get along that's the whole th that's the whole reason we're here today so what do you think is the worst way to die? And they're like, really, Dan? <laughs> and he's like, no, seriously, come on. What's like the worst way to die? And Dan's like, well, I personally think it would be getting eaten alive by a shark. But slowly, not like the one where it's out of nowhere and fast and just blood everywhere. But like when you see them swimming underneath you the whole time and they're swimming circles and circles and they'll come and bite you and then go back and swim some more circles and you're just bleeding. More sharks come, they're swimming circles underneath you and it's just like this slow and painful death. And Parker's like, I think being burnt to death is scarier, like burned alive. And Lynch looks at them and he says, you know that pit in the Return of the Jedi? Return of the Jedi. Where you slowly get digested for a thousand years? That would be the scariest for me. And as they're talking about this, all of the major lights on the ski mountain start shutting off one by one. So all of the slopes, they have these crazy lights on when the visitors are there, when the skiers are there, you know, and they're all shutting down one by one, not in like a power outage way, but more as in like, hey, we're shutting down for the night, like tick, 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 right? <laughs> and so they start freaking out. And Parker, I mean, she's the one in a full on panic. She's panicking. It's rubbing off on everyone. And Dan literally has to look at her and be like, babe, you need to calm your tits because that's not what's happening right now. You don't understand. They can't just leave us up here. Are you kidding me? Do you know what kind of lawsuit that would be? Oh my God, millions of dollars. No resort would do that. No one would try to get a lawsuit like this. We could sue the sh out of this place they're not leaving us up here i'm sure it's like a power outage maybe jason's playing a joke on us maybe he's pissed off because he was expecting girls but it was two dudes and so this is his way of like scaring us straight you know like one of those situations but it's gonna be okay and so at this point parker is just full-on panicking she doesn't care what her boyfriend has to say what the fork does he know you don't know shit, dan and so she's sitting there and she's like oh my god it's sunday he said it's not gonna open until friday we're gonna be stuck up here all week. And they're all like, calm down, calm down. And she's like, all week, what do I do? What Are do they I do? Cold? They're so cold. And at this point, I mean, it's freezing. Lynch is like, I gotta pee, guys. So he lifts up the safety bar, which is like the scariest thing in the world. And he just like starts peeing, you know, overboard onto the snow. And it's like, it starts hailing. And they said, it feels like needles. It feels like needles are coming down on their skin, on their face. Like it's it's intense. They don't know what to do. They're freaking out a little bit. And it feels like they've been up there for hours. And Dan's like, I think it's only been like an hour since we've been up here. And they're like, it's okay. Someone's gonna do like their routine nightly check. They're gonna come, they're gonna see us on the ski lift. They're gonna turn it back on and maybe we can still sue them. You know, that type of vibe is what's going on. But then they see these snow plowers. So they drive these giant machines and they're plowing the snow, I guess making it even or something of that sort. And he's driving up the mountain and they're directly above him. So they start freaking out. And at that point, Lynch, he takes off one of his skis, unclips it and drops the ski to hit the snow plow so yeah. that they can like be like, whoa, we're where did that come from and look up and see that there's people stuck there right yeah. but he was actually on the phone with co-workers that were down at the resort and they're saying hey just pack it up like it's gonna be a snowstorm anyway like just hurry up because we're gonna go out to eat together so he's like oh shit, really and he starts reversing 
So he's not even looking up. He's not looking forward. He starts reversing down the mountain. So it didn't hit the car. It hit the car as he's reversing. He looks, but it had kind of slid in off the car. Uh -huh. So he didn't think anything of it. He thought maybe it's like a pine cone. And so he starts sliding back down because he's got to go eat with the buds, you know? And so he starts reversing down. They realize he's not going to come save them. Nobody's going to come save them at this point. They start full on freaking out again. And all of them are sitting there. I mean, it's heavily snowing. They say that their face feels like it's burning. Parker's getting these red spots on our face, whether it's like, I don't know, like freezer burn. <laughs> freezer burn like a hypothermia <laughs> you know she has all these red spots on her face and it just looks really itchy and she's freaking out a little bit and all their phones are in their ski locker so lynch is trying to lift the mood and he's like okay top three favorite cereals come on we need to stay awake and we need to stay focused and they're like in frosted flakes you know they're just saying all this shit and they're like this is really dumb now dan he keeps saying Guys, we're gonna be stuck up here till Friday. Someone needs to jump, someone needs to jump. Now, the whole thought of that, initially, I was freaking out because, I mean, listen, if you're gonna take a vote, it's gonna be two versus one. Guess who might get pushed off the ski lift, right? <laughs> Lynch, he's looking a little nervous. He's like, ah, oh, fork. And he's like, Dan's like, someone needs to jump and someone needs to get help. Someone needs to jump and someone needs to get help. They're gonna survive if they jump? I don't think so. It's really high. It's really high. Oh my and god. And so Parker's really annoying during all of this. Again, another trope that I don't like to see. She's like smoking a cigarette. She actually drops one of her gloves down to the ground because she's smoking a cigarette. And so now this hand is just gonna get frozen cold. <laughs> And so, you know, everyone's just getting upset. Parker's face is turning red. So Dan's like, all right, all right, I need to do this. So he lifts up the safety bar and he says, listen, even if I get injured, it probably won't be that bad. I can still go get help. People are still Wait, at the who, resort right now. This? Dan, the boyfriend. And he says, it's going to be fine. So he kisses Parker and he jumps off the lift. Now, no one tried to stop him. So Lynch was just like, hey, are you sure? Are you sure? Like, I don't think that's a good idea. And Parker was like, no, Dan, baby, no. And he jumps off the lift. And I don't know how I would have done it. And I don't like to be that person that would say, and if I were in his shoes, right i don't think i would have jumped in the first place but secondly he jumped straight onto his feet so we get a body horror moment where his legs are snapped in half pretty much oh. they're going in different directions Ow. very unnatural oh my god i need to i need to sit crisscross applesauce right now because i'm getting really stressed out and so he's crying parker and lynch are up there crying about their best friend and her boyfriend just being dead pretty much on the ground like he's screaming dan is screaming he doesn't know what to do he's just yelling for help i mean imagine how painful and they're just all freaking out at this point it's very very intense now going forward lynch is like i gotta save the day i gotta save my best bud so he decides maybe there's like poles so the way that the ski lift works is that there's multiple benches and they revolve around a rope right like a string a wire yeah. and then there's poles to hold up all of these wires now those poles typically have ladders on them so that maintenance workers can go up and down the poles emergency exits can use those poles you get it so all he would have to do is trail the wire back a couple benches hit the pole then he gets down on the ladder then he can go run and get some help for Dan because how Dan, did they not think of that because it's so much scarier than jumping off I guess yeah I know a little weird yeah. yeah and so he was like okay this is the plan that's what I'm gonna do and he's like I don't even know how to do a pull-up but I'm gonna have to try now imagine how slippery those wires are but that wasn't even the biggest problem the wires were pretty much like really torn so every time he grips onto it there's just wires going into his hands oh. just bleeding and bleeding and bleeding like obliterating his hands so he tries to get up on the ski lift he has to reach up and almost jump to reach the wire from the ski lift and then the ski lift's gonna shake and Parker's shaking and it's like this whole ordeal. The ski lift screw actually slowly starts coming undone at this point of because of course it does. And so he gets up onto the wire and he immediately slips and falls back onto the ski lift or the ski bench, thankfully, right? And he's like, fuck, what do I do? What do I do? Now, Dan the whole time is like, guys, I'm feeling fuzzy. I can't even feel my legs anymore. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And he's like, oh shit, what do I do? What do I do? Parker's like freaking out. And that's when they hear guys and they look down and they see a wolf staring straight at dan i know you're giving me like the wtf face and like same <laughs> isn't dan's biggest fear to be eaten by sharks yeah slowly. so there is like wolf 
Yeah. Okay. And it was just one. And so they immediately start freaking out. And Parker gets like a bunch of icicles that were forming on the ski lift and starts chucking it at the wolf. And the wolf was growling. And then it eventually it runs away. So Lynch is like, listen, Dan, like, just calm down. They're they're way more scared of you than that you are of them. Like, don't worry. It's gonna be okay. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to climb this wire and I'm gonna get you help. And he's looking down at his hands. And just by grabbing the wire once, like his hands are obliterated. Like they're bleeding through his glove. So he's like, Fuck, like, what do I do? What do I do? So he's freaking out. And then they look down and they just hear Dan screaming, don't let her look. Don't let her look. And they look down and there's an entire pack of wolves surrounding Dan. And he can't run. He can't move. Oh, his words was don't let her look. Yeah. And so at that point, Lynch crawls over to Parker and is like covering her ears, making sure that she doesn't look. And you just hear Dan get slowly ripped apart and eaten by the wolves and then eventually dragged into the woods where they can feast on him some more. Maybe they've got a spice rack waiting in the woods. They got to season that mother forker up. Sorry. I know this ski resort is weird. Like, first of all, the employees suck at and all of them are trying to get fired. The resort itself is looking for a lawsuit at this point. And there's just wolves everywhere. I mean, I think there's wolves everywhere in the mountains, but I mean, typically I thought that they stay away from the resorts because there's so many people, but maybe it's different at night. I don't know. Uh, listen, I'm not a fan of skiing. I think it's really unnatural. I think it's an unnatural sport to put these giant extensions on my feet and make them into big feet and then just like, go down a mountain with my big feet. It just feels very dangerous, okay? I've been skiing before and it's probably because I suck at it, that's why I hate it. On the flip side, I think bowling's cool. I'm pretty good at bowling. <laughs> so that just kind of tells you what kind of person I am. <laughs> no hate on any skiers, it's a crazy sport. I'm just saying it feels very dangerous. Like the risk and reward feels a little off. Do you know Have what I mean? Have you heard the person who died in the bowling alley? <gasps> <laughs> The person who got stuck on the bowling lane overnight because it was so slippery. They couldn't move that way. They couldn't move this way. They were just stuck laying there. I'm sure someone has died in a bowling alley. Yeah. Like not murdered, but like slipped and hit their head, cracked it open. Yeah. I'm so glad it's quarantined that I can't do anything. <laughs> and so, you know, they're all freaking out. He gets dragged into the woods. The night passes. Now it's the next morning. They wake up and they have just their entire face is frozen. Their eyebrows are frozen. And they look down and they just see like Dan's finger in the snow. Like that's it. Like most of his body has been eaten. It's been a five course meal. The wolves do be eaten good. And they start freaking out. And this entire time, Parker falls into that trope again where she immediately starts blaming Lynch for everything. She's like, you know, this is your fault. You should have told him not to do it. Like, he would have listened to you. And he's like, I didn't hear you protesting him jumping. Like, you're the one that didn't even say anything. And you're supposedly the love of his life, his girlfriend. Like, what are you talking about? And they get into this fight. And she pretty much says, it should have been you. Like, it should have been you that jumped. And he's, like, really pissed off by this. And he's like, oh, it should have been me. And finally, she starts crying. And she's like, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. That's not what I meant. And she goes over and she hugs Lynch. And it's like a, okay, we didn't need any of this information. And, of course, while they're stuck in the middle of the sky right now, about to die wolves underneath they're about to get frostbite right they're like why are you still single <laughs> she's like how come you're not dating anyone <laughs> because that's so important right now seriously yes they get into it like the, most of the movie is like them talking about bullshit and she's like how are you still single like do you not like people <laughs> And so they kind of have that argument. They make up. They take a nap. <laughs> yeah. And Parker wakes up and her entire hand was frozen onto the bench, like the safety bar. So she has to rip it off and you can see like an outlayer of skin just on there. And it's just a really oh, gross gosh. movie. Yeah. Um, I feel like they did really good in the like body horror aspect, like that genre of like the legs and the skin ripping off and the frostbite. But in terms of like the cast pulling through on the acting and the plot and maybe even the screenwriting, it wasn't necessarily the best. And so, you know, she rips off her hand from the bench and she's like, God, what do I do? What do I do? And she's like, do you think they're going to send more maintenance men to like clean the mountain or something? And Lynch is like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they will. And he's just trying to lift her spirits. And she, she goes into a spiral and she's like, oh my God, I have a puppy at home. And nobody knows about my puppy. And she starts crying. And she's like, every little noise in that hallway, my little puppy is going to think it's me. And 
can't imagine how hungry my mommy is. Like, imagine how hungry he is. And just all of that jazz, right? And he's like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Which, like, side note, where are your families? <laughs> Like, are you, do, did you guys tell any friends that you were coming here? Yeah. I mean, none of this is making sense, right? But they're like, my puppy's going to die, and she's going to feel like I abandoned her. She has no idea that I'm stuck on a ski lift. My puppy just thinks that I abandoned her, that I'm this horrible owner, and that she doesn't deserve love. All of that jazz. So she starts freaking out. Her face is getting more red. She even ends up peeing in the chairlift and crying. So that moment was very relatable. That was like the one moment that was relatable. Because she's peeing, and she's watching her pee fall in the ski lift and she's crying now at first you would think she's crying because you know overall parker has been kind of that girl that's like oh my god you know mm -hmm. but i think it's because imagine like that's like just facing the situation like you're literally peeing in midair like you're stuck here like this is the realization that no one's coming to help so she's crying and that's when joe's like okay i'm gonna go climb i'm gonna do this and he starts climbing the wire so he gets up on there and he's like, okay, when I ask you to, I'm going to need you to throw my ski stick, mm -hmm. you know, the poles, yeah. throw my pole at me towards the ladder because I need it, but not right now, okay? And so she's like, okay, sounds good. So he starts climbing up the ski bench, which makes the ski like bench screw come even more loose. And he starts climbing the wire, makes it to the next bench and he's bleeding everywhere, makes it to the next one. And as he's coming down the ladder, I mean, he can barely come down this high ladder because his hands are obliterated at this point. You know, mm -hmm. they're completely bloodied up. He just kind of falls and he's like, now throw me my ski pole now. And she throws it at him. He catches it. And the reason he asked for that is because at this point, the wolves came back. The because wolves? they heard, yeah, and this is another meal. And so he starts kind of hitting at them with the skis, and he runs up and he clips onto his skis that he had thrown down uh -huh. one at the little snow mountain plower, and then the other one had dropped. And so he clips those on and he's skiing down as a pack of wolves are chasing him. And he says, I'll be right back for you. I'm gonna go get help. Don't worry. Just hang tight. And he starts skiing down the mountain and she watches him and all of these wolves following him. So she's like, okay, okay, it's gonna Was be okay. Was that scene cool? Kind of. The wolf chasing a human down the... But they look kind of like huskies. So it's kind of cute. It's like cool, but also like... They must be really hungry. I don't know. And like, Funny. it was, I don't know. I don't know why it wasn't like the coolest scene in the world. And so she's sitting up there. The freaking ski lift is coming loose and she's like waiting for him. Another night passes. The next morning comes. I know it just like quickly passes. It was like night, morning. And yeah, literally like that. And so she's like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And the ski lift looks like it's about to fall off. She's tilted on one side. She's freaking out a little bit and it comes slowly coming undone. Now the ski lift is completely just held on by one side she is falling down the ski lift she's holding on with her bare hands and she's like okay now that i'm closer to the floor she drops to the floor and the ski bench falls and it falls on her foot so now her foot is injured wait they fell down the whole bench fell yeah, off the whole bench fell off and the way that it fell off wasn't immediate so that was nice it was slow so she was able to hang herself from one side which gave her a lot more closer leverage to the floor so okay. she didn't injure herself like dan but the ski bench actually landed on her foot so she had this foot injury so she starts freaking out and she gets onto her stomach and literally starts crawling down the mountain just crawling and as she's crawling she looks to the right and she sees a pack of wolves staring at her and she sees them and she looks down there's lynch completely almost eaten at this point like he's dead no so not just her boyfriend but her boyfriend's best friend have been eaten by the wolves and for some reason the wolves they have been so hungry they were just looking for consuming people but for some reason they don't really think like costco they don't really think you know what let's take her too they just look at her and they go back to eating lunch. So she just continues to crawl down the mountain. And she crawls down the mountain and somehow to a road where she almost gets hit by a car. They pull over and it's a man who puts her in the front seat and he's calling 911 and he's like, don't worry, I'm going to get you help. And he's rushing towards the hospital. And that's when my true crime brain said, no, he ain't. He ain't rushing to no hospital. <laughs> but like, he probably is. <laughs> and that's the end. Oh, so she she said. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that makes me doesn't want to go <laughs> snowboarding yeah. or skiing ever. This is a weird, weird movie. 
Um, I I liked it. It's like a really light watch, which seems weird. You think that was light? <laughs> it's like a light watch in the sense of there's not really any. I guess it's suspense, but there's not really any psychological horror. There's not a really big plot. It's also not horror. Like I love horror movies. I hate watching them, but I love them in the sense that there's like a plot. There's things that you need to follow and like little details that you recognize, right? But this one wasn't that necessarily either. This、mm. one was very one of those. Like I would say, it's like the horror version of like a very casual yeah. show, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 But I do have to mention, it is、oh. a low-budget film, and they did really good with the resources that they had. But I think just compared to some of like the crazy behemoths that we've been watching recently, you know, I don't know if it stacks up to even like something like The Perfection, which I don't know if they were a massive budget either. But it was good. Next time, I'm gonna go with Rotten Tomatoes instead of TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments what are your thoughts on this movie. I know that this wasn't me just straight up telling you a movie. I know that this was me making fun of some parts of the movie and my fiance, you know, dogging on the movie. But that was the only way. There was no way I could seriously sit here and tell you this movie. I just couldn't do it. But I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.